on that note, it's my pleasure to introduce you to someone who has been working for decades to spend her life really trying to work to transform women's health. Maria Shriver is a renowned journalist, author, and tireless advocate for women's health, and it's really my absolute pleasure to introduce her today. Maria. Wow. Wow, that is so exciting. Thank you all so much for being here. I think it uh, just takes a moment. Just let us all take a moment to absorb the moment that we are in. It's a historic moment. I want to thank Dr. Biden for bringing us here, for creating this. Look at this screen. This has never been seen before, never been done before. It's 2024. <laughs> Look at this. This is extraordinary. Senator Markey, thank you for all of your work on Alzheimer's. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Susan Blumenthal, thank you for all of your work. Senator Warren, uh, Secretary Becerra, thank you for leading the charge here. Uh, the mayor, thank you for welcoming us. I told you how great the Cambridge police are out there today. <laughs> she said, thank you, no one ever says anything. <laughs> Congressman Presley, for your work on menopause, uh, thank you. Menopause is having a moment. At long last, 6,000 women go through menopause, enter menopause every single day. And so often here, we don't know how to help you. So thank you for jumping in. Maria, thank you so much for being here and for your involvement in women's health. Uh, this is an exciting, exciting day. Um, this wasn't, this couldn't have happened until this president and this first lady of the United States stepped up and made women's health research a priority for this federal government. Imagine that. This is a health equity issue and a human rights issue. It's writing an issue that has long been ignored by our government. There are, as Renee said, 167 million American women in this country. Think about that. Women of every age, ethnicity, race, religion, and political affiliation and their lives will be forever changed by this initiative, which you folks here at ARPA-H have just committed to making a priority. Thank you. It's beyond exciting, beyond hopeful, thrilling, and this is an extraordinary moment. Just seven months ago, I went in to visit with the First Lady and her Chief of Staff, Anthony Bernal. I spoke to them about the lack of funding and the lack of research into women's health. I spoke to B Dr. Biden about the opportunity for this administration to do something historic, something transformative, something life-changing, and the opportunity to level the playing field for women when it comes to health research. In the time since that meeting, this White House, under her leadership, has coordinated the biggest revolution in how women and girls in this country will have their physical and mental needs met. Seven months. Don't say the government cannot work fast. This is a revolution. They hired the legendary Dr. Carolyn Missouri. They activated the entire Gender Policy Council under Jen Klein's able leadership. They galvanized the entire government cabinet under Secretary Becerra's leadership to get in on the act or else. And now here we are. Record time, breakneck speed, solutions. I've been around a long time, as have many people here, and I've never seen the federal government work this fast. Everyone in this room is part of this historic undertaking. All of you assembled here, just like the folks at ARPA-H, are about transformative health breakthroughs. You're about dramatic health solutions. You're about putting the pedal to the metal, and so are we. This is a sprint, but it's also a marathon. I've spent 20-some years working in the Alzheimer's advocacy space, as Senator Markey knows, and the last 14 of those years, I've been trying to get answers to the question why women are so vulnerable to Alzheimer's. Women make up two-thirds of the cases of all Alzheimer's cases, and no one knows why that is. We don't know. Those are the words I heard over and over again any time I asked, 
why were women affected, not just by Alzheimer's, but about so many other major health conditions? Why do women suffer more with MS? We don't know. Why are women 80% of all the autoimmune diseases? Why are black and brown women two-thirds more likely to die of pregnancy-related complications than white women? We don't know. Why do we know so little about menopause, about women's lives at midlife and beyond? This historic investment by this federal government, this administration, will begin to provide the answers that those 167 million American women deserve. It's going to level the playing field. But my hope is that it's not just the federal government that will make women's health the priority it needs to be. I hope that every tech founder in this room and beyond this room, every philanthropist in this room, beyond this room, every innovator, every scientist, every researcher, and every instigator in this room and in this country joins in this massive undertaking. And no, make no mistake, this is a massive undertaking. But women have never shied away from big, bold, massive undertakings. We've always been long distance competitors. We have changed history over and over again, and now we will do it in real time, in a real way. Make no mistake about that. So let me end here today with a quote from my Uncle President Kennedy that I keep next to my phone in my office. I think about it every time I come here to Boston, where the Kennedy Library sits in all its majesty, not too far from here. When he was asked in 1962, why go to the moon, he said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and to do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and our skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept and one we are unwilling to postpone and one in which we intend to win and others too. Amen to that. Women of America, this is our moonshot. This challenge is bigger than any one of us, and it will be hard, but it is within our grasp. If we want our children, our sisters, our mothers, our grandmothers to be able to hold the world upon their shoulders, which they already do, we owe them our best efforts and our best research. They deserve the facts. They deserve to make decisions based on the truth. There is no doubt on my mind that we will make good on this pledge to radically transform women's health. There is no doubt in my mind that we will be able to show women that they are valued, that they are worthy, and that this administration, this government, is putting its money where its mouth is. I'm sure this will signal to women of all ages that at long last, we really do love them to the moon and back. So thank you all very much for being here, and congratulations.